took him away from his kids for nothing. He didn't even do nothing to nobody. Hey! Face the people! Show me your hands! You're murdering us! Stop! No more! Stop! It's 2018! My son's son. Shots fired, some say go. Show me your hands! I see your hands! Hold on, let me get my fist. Right now we're going uh, to the airport. Whatever I could do to help prevent something like this from happening again, I'm, I'm down. Part of my brother's legacy is bridging the gap, connecting people who usually would not be connected. I'm praying for you guys right now. Just want you to know. I'm first I'm thinking about my brother. Um, wherever I go, anything, any type of events like this, Stefan is always in my heart. Stefan um, will live for generations long after I left this earth. So my thing is keeping his name alive in a positive light. And that's all, that's all I'm doing. I'm, I'm here as a vessel and a beacon for my brother. I had a text message from my little sister on my grandmother's phone. And, um, it was that night, so it was probably you know, later on that evening after everything had happened. And then um, I got a text that said, Little Papa Dead. And then I went there and the street was blocked off. And then I remember um, saying to the officer, oh, y'all, um, y'all messed up. I said a different word than that, but I remember saying y'all, y'all messed up. And, um, and uh, that's how I found out, you know. I knew it was something wrong when, the, how, how they were acting and reacting to me when I arrived at the scene. I knew something was wrong, yeah. Nine one one. What's location in the emergency? Yeah, it's guys going down the street breaking windows of cars. You busted both my truck windows out. You busted in the people's backyard right now. Uh, across the street from my place. Five A was a male subject that broke some car windows. He's now hiding in the backyard of this address. Unknown weapons. No further description other than male with a black hoodie. One out. One further house to one yard to the south. Of, uh, two minutes trying to catch him. Shots fired, shots fired. Copy, shots fired. Lord, we ask you to look over Sequita, Lord. Because we know what she going through. We ask you to look over Sequet. Because we know what she going through. We ask you to look over Stabate. We ask you to look over Dad at. We ask you to look over Jalen. Kaylin, Nevaeh, because these are the ones that got the rest of the night. As it turned out, when Stefan Clark was shot, of course, the police officers didn't know it at the time, but he was in his uh, grandmother's yard. I heard guys go, pow, 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 pow. And so then we was waiting on the police to come, but the police was already here. They did not tell me nothing was going on. They just said that it's been a crime scene, and that was it. They finally told me hours later that there was a victim dead in my backyard. And I said, I hope you guys ain't killed my, none of my grandkids because they go back there and that's how we have to let them in through the garage because we can't hear them. Um, I said, he gonna tell me, you can't look in your backyard. I said, what you mean I can't look in my backyard? Soon when that man start going out this door, I open up the curtain, that was my Chris. I opened up the curtain and he was gone. He was dead. His body was there, right there. Right there was my grandson, dead, with the iPhone right there on the thing. He was right there, dead. And I told them officers, you guys are murderers, murderers, murderers. You guys killed that baby for nothing. You took him away from his kids for nothing. He didn't even do nothing to nobody. My 
Action song. Shots fired, some say go. They were being transparent in releasing the body cam footage earlier than they needed to, but then within the footage, there was something that they were trying to not let out to the public. Go inside, please. Hey, you? Hey, you guys good? And I think that the police were trying to be transparent in this instance, but the contents of the video made people less trusting of police as well. It's 2018! You know, something was in my head like, I gotta get out there and do something. You know, I gotta, my brother's voice needs to be heard in some way. And A lot of community members went down to City Hall and they started trying to get some answers from people at City Hall and chanting and they had signs. No peace! No more! Then it, it went from there to the street and it was all very peaceful and people were marching on the street trying to let people know about who Stephon Clark was. Enough is enough! You're murdering us! And they started saying, let's take the freeway, let's take the freeway, let's go. And so they started marching towards the freeway on I Street, towards the bridge. That's the one you bullshit! And a brother like you did it! They kept trying to take over the freeway, and they were able to succeed. People were scrambling to get up there, and they marched onto the northbound lane of I-5, and the freeway was completely shut down. Shut it down! What made me um, proud to be a, the brother of Stefan Clark is seeing how many people know that he should be here or feel that he should be here as well, you know, knowing that his life was unjustly taken. And then perhaps most notably, they shut down the exterior of Golden One Center for two Sacramento Kings games. And, you know, when the Kings thing happened, to see all the support out there for my brother was amazing, it was awesome. The owner of the team, you know, went down to the floor and gave this impassioned speech about the need for um, everyone to get along and they agreed to contribute huge amounts of money to these communities in need. We at the Kings recognize your people's ability to protest peacefully and we respect that. We hurt them economically, I believe, when we protested that arena. So I feel like they were forced to address the situation of the community and the people. There was a lot of players there that um, I remember that they were also very supportive of the family. We will not stick to sports. We will not shut up the truth. This is never the basketball. Change can be uncomfortable. Change is necessary. We need to talk. We need to act. We matter. We must unite. Say his name, Stephon Clark. Stephon Clark. And there was even a movement where amongst the players, they wore shirts supporting Stephon Clark. They had to do something. After when they shut that ran down, we plan on doing it again. And we're gonna do it again and again and again. I think they had to do something. I'm out here not because anybody told me to, but because I know that's what I need to do. The vocal force that I saw, it, it, I've never seen anything like that. Say his name! Stephon Clark! Say his name! Stephon Clark! No justice! No peace! Stephon Clark! Stephon Clark! I think when the police department released those videos, it allowed people to see for themselves as best they could what had happened that night, and there had been a building anger in the community about law enforcement shootings. We are on a mission, a mission to save Sacramento.
cell phone. All he had was a cell phone. At the end of the day, I really believe if SAC PD doesn't know the difference between a gun and a cell phone, they shouldn't be doing the job. They shouldn't even have the job, you know? Like, like it's a goddamn cell phone. <laughs> like, like. Yeah, we made it. I got a lot of work to do. I'm gonna be working at this for the rest of my life. I try to take it um, one step at a time, you know? This is, it's a process, you know? I shouldn't be here at the end of the day. I should not be here. My brother should be here, you know? All this is nice and all. Bridging the gap is nice, but, it, you know, I'm 26 years old. It's not my responsibility to be trying to help bridge the gap between law enforcement and at-risk communities and underrepresented communities. I wouldn't wish this trip on my worst enemy, I'd say that much. memory of Stefan Clark and for our community. Please bow your heads. You will be heard and we will be listening. Well, Stevante made a pretty big um, scene when he was introduced to me anyway. I'm an energy person, I go by energy. So I walked in the room, I didn't feel the energy, it felt like a setup. I was like, no, wait. And I start chanting and screaming and, and I'm dancing a little bit and I got my shades on and all that. I seen um, Mayor on the name tag part. I don't know what to do, I just ran up to the guy's desk, you know, so I think the only thing to do is now jump on it or whatever, you know, so it was all an energy thing. Hey, shut up, you don't wear shit here. If I could take anything back, it'd be that. That'd be the first and the last thing. I, not a day go by, I don't hear something about it. And then for several weeks thereafter, he was out in the community doing things that uh, were not productive. He was very vocal and unabashed in his morning. Oh, we gotta go run up on nigga and smack that no. up. We gotta, we, gotta, we gotta go run up on that nigga, you feel me? Oh. What the fuck we gonna run up? Hello. And he really got Stefan's name out there. He publicized Stefan more than anyone else. They will not forget his name. They will not forget his name. I did not expect the conversation to switch from my brother to me. That's not what I wanted, you know. Um, my intentions were when I started hitting the streets and protesting and being more vocal is that, um, I wanted some type of accountability. The, the, the mental institution is what broke me, you know? Um, if somebody told you you're crazy and you want to find out if you're crazy, just go spend a night there a few days, you know? Let them 50 150 you. You'll find out if you're crazy or not. But it, it showed me that I had to advocate for certain things and certain people, you know? I had to be out there and do things right. Jail as well. Another turning point was the um, CNN interview, the Don Lemon, the bail thing. How's your family holding up? How are you holding up? What does that mean? Next question. Everyone feels different and sees things different. You know, I was going through a lot at that time. I mean, like, a lot, a lot. Like, I don't think people understand, you know? I had the family to deal with, the media to deal with. The Don Lemon situation, the mental institution, the mayor's desk, jail, these, these are things that changed me forever, you know? He's one of the few people who has ever come into this office and said, how can I help? And when the Measure U Committee was formed and we each got an opportunity to appoint one member, I thought, who would be better? He brings a perspective that no one else on that committee is going to have. I'm, I'm grateful for Larry Carr for picking me to sit on that seat. And I, I look forward to doing a lot of things. One of the main reasons I'm on that board is because I honestly would like to see a library either be commemorated or have something to do with my brother's legacy. Like, I can't be mad at everybody. I can't fight everybody, you know? But what I can do is I switched that and I was like, everybody love everybody. And um, let's see how we can work together and bring some type of um, effective change in the Sacramento community. How do you prevent it? It's, it's a... It's a question that we pondered with. The new police chief, Daniel Hahn, 
He's from the area. He's African American himself. People did think that he was going to be a reformer and come in. So Chief Han, explain to me, where's the change at? We thought if we got you in, by you being a black man, and I'm not being prejudiced, no. but it is what it is, it that we would get a little bit it's of type of change. But you ain't did nothing, because we still had killings under your belt. When things pretty much take over your city, um, it, you can't get away from it. As these things happen across the country, they just start building on themselves, and so, the latest one uh, gets more attention. Um, obviously, the fact that uh, Stefan Clark didn't have a gun is obviously a, a big part of that. I'm gonna get it. Watch me move. This is selling. That's a tool. For the life of me, I don't understand why the president has said this is a local problem when we know that it is a national crisis. You can just look at the number of unarmed black men who have been shot. We don't have a problem with law enforcement. We got a problem with racism in this country. My heart breaks for what has happened. Stefan looked like me, he'd still be alive today. I believe that. The um, protests and some of the things that happened after this is proof that our relationship is not where it could be um, ideally. You know, the chief has it. He's a black chief, so, you know, I, I can imagine it's pretty hard for him, you know, not only from the black community, the African American side, but the police department side. You know, but at, at San, I don't, I don't look at the chief as somebody um, to blame when it comes to my brother's situation. I don't blame law enforcement or police for what happened to my brother. I blame Terrence and Jared. You know, that's who I hold accountable. That's who I look at when it comes to my brother's situation. I think this case, really has changed the city and its policies tremendously. One of the things that came out of this was that the body camera policy wasn't robust enough. It didn't speak to muting and things like that. So very uh, quickly after this incident, I issued an emergency order, if you will, that said um, you will not mute your camera because the policy didn't speak specifically to muting. And then now we have a full policy. Dan was the one that came up with the initiative to change the police pursuit policy. We've never had a policy that specifically addresses foot pursuit policy. We've trained on it at the academy. People um, get training on it in their field training program, but there's nothing written down on paper of what our expectations and, and what are the things that they need to think about. So would we have a foot pursuit policy right now if it wasn't for this? There's a good chance we wouldn't. The mayor has expressed his uh, apology over the fact that Clark was killed. He says he shouldn't have died. The tragedy warrants not only our sorrow, but a deep examination of what occurred and what policies and procedures must be examined and changed to minimize the chance that this does not happen again. You didn't see that in the past here. Um, there was always a knee-jerk reaction that whatever the officers did was, you know, the right call. But the focus on the use of force has changed things dramatically, not just in Sacramento, but in California. I'm honored now to sign this legislation. Legislative change, that's how we prevent something like this from ever happening again. Even though AB 392 probably won't get the job done, but this is a start. You know, we need stronger and tougher comprehensive bills. California has moved forward, and the Stefan Clark uh, shooting is a big part of that. My mama said, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And that's how I feel. I think when it comes to bridging the gap, I think my brother's legacy and myself could play a huge role in making that a reality. To think about what my brother would think of such a situation, my brother comes from a, a community where police protect property, not people. I think my brother knows what I'm trying to do for his legacy. I would hope he's proud of me. I miss my brother. I really do. We're all gonna die. Everybody in this car is gonna die one day, you know? And hopefully we have something like a legacy to carry on generations after we've left this earth. Something that we've done, something that we, we put a stamp on this earth, that we were here. I'm that stamp for Stefan.
was a crime committed? There's no question that a human being died. But when we look at the facts and the law, and we follow our ethical responsibilities, the answer to that question is no. And as a result, we will not charge these officers with any criminal liability related to the shooting death and the use of force on Stefan Clark. This district attorney has never filed charges against an officer in a, in a shooting. Um, it's difficult to say that their actions constituted a crime. In each case, the reviews have shown an officer feared for their safety. Terrence yelled gun. I tucked in real quick, came back out, saw him in the same position, and still being surprised that I wasn't taking rounds this whole time, decided to fire and in the, in the threat before we actually started taking rounds. Okay. And then did you intend to shoot the subject? Yes, I did. Okay. And why? I was in fear for my life. I thought he was already shooting at me. You could make the argument, as the you know, law enforcement supporters have, that the videos show these officers feared for their safety. You can hear the fear in their voices on the audio. You all right? You hit? Yeah, I'm good. All right. He was still pointing. Oh, shit. When I saw again, you all right, dude? Yeah, I'm all right. I don't think I've hit or anything. It's emotionally draining, you know. It's it's, it's heart-wrenching. It's, it's like... I was being punched in the stomach, you know, like numerous times though, you know, and um, I, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. And the way she just dragged my brother, it was like he was killed all over again. There was an incident that happened on March 16th, two days before this, a domestic violence incident that happened with the mother of his children. Her name is Selena. Selena, the mother of his children, reported to police that Mr. Clark had assaulted her. Mr. Clark tried to call Selena 76 times. It is clear that they had a very tumultuous relationship about how one can commit suicide. Was what is the quickest and easiest way to kill yourself? And Xanax and alcohol, a combination that can kill. He had sent her some text messages asking her if she, he wanted her to kill himself. And in that text message, he said, Let's fix our family, or I'm going to take all of these. What I feel the DA announced today was not about what happened on March 16th, was not about what happened on March 17th. It was what happened on March 18th when the officers murdered my fiancé, murdered Stefan Clark, and now he'll never come back to us. My faith in the justice system is what it has been. It's not for us. It's not for the black community. It's, it's what they've shown us time and time again. These are decisions that have to be made by people in um, uh, very powerful positions based on what the law was and what their actions were based on the facts. Um, and as emotional as it is, it's somewhat a non-emotional conclusion. You feel like, okay, this could be me. This could be literally me, you know? So I would hate for that to be a situation like this happen to anybody else and nothing happens to the officers who do it. One of the important things that you're going to hear today is that we're not always on the same page in terms of how we get there, but we are willing to talk and to discuss those different ways in which we might reach that same goal. We're all here for the same reason. Stevante's brother, Stefan, uh, was shot in March of 2018 in his backyard by the Sacramento Police Department. Uh, and it was not long after Chief Han had taken uh, reins as the city's first black chief. We have a police chief who is, as an individual, is a trusted messenger uh, who has, for years, had done the work in the city um, and then uh, but has now come into a position where um, he had this, this very challenging situation, yeah. of course. To me, a healthy community is one where, as, as people grow up, they have hopes and dreams and they have the ability to chase those. And then it's up to them. But right now, I, I, in a lot of our communities, they don't have hope and they don't have an equal ability to chase those dreams. A healthy community to me is, um, trust with the community and the ones who are sworn to protect and serve us. 
I don't see a lot of that, especially in Sacramento. Uh, you know, there's, there's a total divide between law enforcement and community like myself. So a healthy community for me is a safe community, a community where, you know, you don't get shot over 20 or over eight times in your grandma's backyard, you know? I mean, the fact that Stevante is sitting on this stage, went through a transformational policing class with a room full of community members and police officers, not, not more than a year and a half after he lost his brother, I, and I guarantee you he's heard some things about himself repeatedly over and over from every segment of our community, and he does it anyway. Um, my family's still emotional, very emotional. You know, Stefan is, there's not a day go by where we don't hear his name. It's pretty incredible that this family, after going through this, even has those conversations with me or this department and is even thinking about moving forward um, and what can we do to ensure this doesn't happen to somebody else. Obviously, we're not ready to police our own communities. And since we're not ready to do that, we need to accept the fact that the police are gonna be here and we need to work with police in building these partnerships. You can have the best body camera and the best policy if we don't start understanding each other better, come together better, and are able to expand our experiences so we can have that trust, those other things won't mean anything. You know, we can't be just mad and mad and not talk and mad and fight against one another because that gets nothing done. You know, it gets nothing done. I want to get things done. Yeah, and um, I think that's one of the only way to get things done is to have the, the tough conversations with people like Chief Han. There are eight council districts in Sacramento. Of the eight council districts, District 8, which includes Meadowview, is always the second or third lowest in crime. I tell that to my community members because they don't believe it. And most of the people in the city don't believe it. Yeah, I feel like this happened in Meadowview. There's a, there's a systematic reason this happened in Meadowview. SAC PD, in my eyes, has failed tremendously when it comes to connecting with the people and the underrepresented at-risk communities, the people that live in the type of communities that I'm from. And our communities feel like they're more concerned about property than people. If we had the same trust in Meadowview, as we do in some of our other communities, we wouldn't see some of the things that we see. No peace. You do see a movement, you see movement in the right direction. And uh, at the same time that we move in that direction, we also have to be sure we don't go too far. Our law enforcement officers face a very difficult job every day. Anytime you have a tragedy, especially one of this magnitude, where, some, where many things positive don't come out of it, then all you're left with is a tragedy. And what I respect so much about Stevante is I think he feels the same way. I think we're just now starting, really. The dialogue is there. The dialogue is there. I think that's big enough, right? Like, we can have the conversation now. I don't think we've been having the conversation. Watch us. Watch what Sacramento does. Not just this police department, but this community and this family and watch where we are in years to come. What's going on? The officers. Are they patrolling our streets? He said, one of them are. One of them at the office doing investigations and whatnot. I said, man, you know, we gotta talk about this. It's, it's hard to bridge the gap with law enforcement, you know, when they do things like this. You know, it's hard. It's hard, to, you know. People see me go out there to DC with the chief, and, you know, that's me trying to bridge the gap prior to these officers. If I would have known this outcome, I definitely wouldn't have went to D.C., but I understand he had to wait for the FBI and Justice Department to wrap up their investigations. This is so Bridie, my little granddaughter, eight years old. She says, we need justice, and we need it now, and we need it now. There are too many people who was murdered by police violence. Uh, my grandmother, she's a Christian person with a, with, with, 
great faith. Me, I'm a Christian person, but I have little faith in these systems. Very little to no faith in these systems when it comes to our rights, our fights, our causes. I believe if this was a different community, a different colored person, a different outcome would be. We would not, this would be a whole different situation. Justice for me is not a reality because I'd rather have my brother back, you know? So when I fight for my brother's legacy and I'm not out there really fighting for justice, justice, justice like that, I know it probably turns people a little off or whatever, but I believe that's part of who my brother is and not was, but who he is because even though he's not here physically, spiritually, I really do believe that he's here in Sacramento and he lives with us. His initials are SAC, you know what I mean? Stefan Alonzo Clark. How big on legacy is that? This is just my way of saying, you know, since I'm not going to get justice, at least we could have his name highlighted in a positive way for his legacy, you know. I think his legacy is that. I really do believe that.